Well, hello everyone and welcome to another podcast of the DC Capstone Report on the day after Christmas. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas yesterday. I had spent some enjoyable time with your family. I know I did. So uh, today we get back into the swing of things of the podcast and putting it up. So we're going to start today. We're going to have again the three segments. In the first segment, we're going to take a look at the injury and the suspension update for the Orange Bowl for the Alabama team. In the second segment, we're going to focus on the Oklahoma game plan and some players to watch in this game. In the third and final segment of the day, uh, I will talk about our prediction uh, for the outcome of the Orange Bowl versus Oklahoma. The D.C. Capstone Report is featured each Tuesday morning on Tide 102.9, The Morning Blitz with Martin Houston. You can listen live at Tide1029.com. Well, in this first segment today, Lance, we're going to uh, look at the injury and the suspensions. Uh, the injuries we knew about, suspensions we didn't know about uh, going into to the, our last podcast. But uh, let's uh, focus on the injury updates as far as the one everybody needs, wants to talk about, of course, is Tua. We know Tua's ankle was injured. He had some sort of procedure on his ankle, and he's been coming back just this morning. Uh, at the time of taping this podcast, uh, they're having the pressure uh, conference down uh, in or- Orange Bowl. Miami for the Orange Bowl. Uh, Tua at the press conference, it was it, his own words was he was 80 to 85% right now. So that's a big statement coming out of his mouth. He's not 100%. He's 80, 85% at this point, three days to go prior to the Orange Bowl. So I think that injury update is that he's getting better. Uh, he seems to be moving better. Uh, what I've seen him in the practices and his walking, of course, is better. Uh, the question will be, can he plant, can he cut? Uh, and I think that's where the the other 20 to 15, 20% comes in his planning and his cutting. And I think that's going to be important in this game. So the injury update on Tua seems to be good. Uh, it looks like that he'll be uh, progressing well. Uh, one of the other uh, injuries we've, we've been looking at is the, all the people just have been kind of been banged up and, and been wearing the old non-contact jerseys. It looks like in the last practice, we had more of those in regular jerseys, regularly practicing. Uh, so it, it looks like our injuries are just the ones that have been nicked up and those that have been sore, those that have been held out or limited in practice seems to be lesser and lesser. We're still looking to see if uh, Terrell Lewis might uh, have an opportunity to come back. That's still up in the air. I don't think he's been medically cleared to play yet. And you got, of course, Christopher Allen. No one's talked about him, but you got him, uh, Chris Allen, opportunity to come in and contribute. He had an injury early in the season. He still has his uh, red shirt capabilities to get a red shirt this year as well and still be able to play with the new four four uh, game redshirt rule. So I don't know, uh, there's really nothing been said about him yet, but just kind of keep it on the back burner and be thinking about he might get to come back and participate on the defense. Other than that, the other, uh, the other thing that's been come out is the suspensions, and it also ties into one of the injury updates. Unfortunately, we had three players. Uh, they had a violation of team rule that was announced when they got to Miami. Uh, those three players had a violation of team rules. Uh, I think there were two non-starters, Kendrick James, uh, one of those, and Elliot Baker, an offensive lineman. Uh, but the one that was a starter was Deontay Brown. And, you know, I've been so so high on Deontay Brown this podcast. I spoke about him early on. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I identified him on the Martin Houston show, The Blitz, as one of the players early on in the summer that could contribute. And he has done really great for our run game. So, uh, that uh, suspension to Deontay Brown, I think, will be uh, harder, greater felt on the team uh, than most people realize out there in our run game because I, I really look forward to him coming back full speed from that. Uh, he had been injured with the turf toe from that turf toe injury, uh, but uh, it looks like he, was, he has been left at home. He's not gonna, didn't make the trip and been suspended for a violation of team rules. So. We're not sure what they did, but we know that uh, uh, there is an enforcement policy, uh, and I'm sure that it went through the, the, the right procedures and the, and the right channels, and, and Coach Saban felt like that these players need to be suspended um, because of their violation of the team rules. So it will be without Deontay Brown. So that means that Lester Cotton has to come in and play, and then there's some other people on the offensive line that might get an opportunity uh, to come in and, and play if something were to happen to Lester Cotton. I'm sure they're working that out in these practices as to who the backup is going to be at that position. Uh, but we've got some other offensive linemen that are good that play tackle and guard, can play both. Uh, so I, I look for Alabama to be able to come, put a good team on the field. But I do think this injury, to, I mean, this uh, suspension to Deontay Brown is going to affect the run game. And we're going to talk about that in the second uh, segment when we talk about the Oklahoma game plan and the players to watch. So 
but again, that's an update on the injuries and an update on the suspensions. Uh, we got three more days for the Orange Bowl, and we'll see if uh, if the, if the team remains intact heading into the game on uh, de- on Saturday, December the 29th. You have been listening to the DC Capstone Report. The DC Capstone Report is brought to you each time this week by RollTideBama.com and FreelancePitchers.com. Well, in this second segment, we're going to take a little time to, to talk about the game planning for the Oklahoma game uh, and uh, what we what we think Alabama might be doing in order to prepare for this uh, game against Oklahoma. And then we're going to look at six players to watch, three on offense and three on defense for our listeners out there to kind of watch in this game to, kind of, to give you an idea of how Alabama is doing early on the game. And, I, and I'll identify those in, in just a little bit. But first of all, let's look at the game plan. It looks like after hearing Coach Loxley at the press conference and, and hearing uh, Coach Saban talk, I don't expect Alabama to, to change anything about our game plan uh, that, we, that we, we talked about in our last podcast. I think Alabama comes out in this game uh, and uh, uh, attempts to run the ball. O- Oklahoma has given up many yards uh, up the middle, been gashed by many play- players in the Big 12, and I, I think Alabama is going to come out and try to run the ball to set up the pass and open up some deep balls uh, for Tua to take advantage of this secondary that's given up a lot of big plays. So uh, in doing so, I think the one thing in this game plan, the one cog that's going to have to be adjusted is the Deontay Brown puzzle piece that's now taken out of the puzzle uh, due to his suspension. So that's going to affect our running game. But I still believe that we're going to try to lean on them on the run. Uh, and and I, I think the reason I believe this to be true for two reasons. One is I think uh, it, uh, Oklahoma has a tendency to give up big plays in the running game, and we have some, uh, some, uh, some running backs that can take advantage of that. Uh, I believe our offensive line stacks up well against their defensive line, and we'll have ability to open some big holes in the running game. So I think that'll uh, make us very productive. Uh, and by doing so, we'll open up those passing lanes when they have to bring up safeties and cornerbacks to help in the run support. The second thing that I think this is effective would be in, in the overall game plan to take the ball out of uh, Oklahoma's explosive offense, his hands. Uh, the last time that Kyler Murray has it in his hands, I think the, 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 um, uh, the better, greater the opportunity for Alabama uh, to be win this game and win it big. Uh, if we can run the ball, take some time off the clock, keep the, Oklahoma's offense on the field for a long time, uh, I, I believe that would be uh, bode well for us. If you think about uh, – uh, oh, I'm sorry, take, keep o- Oklahoma's defense on the field for a long time, not their offense. Try to keep their offense off the field. I think that would bode well for us. And when you think about it over the long haul, uh, their really defense hasn't had to play that long uh, on the field. They're always giving up big plays, and they're off the field uh, while their offense is while our offense is working. So having a run-oriented, uh, ground them out, ground and pound type uh, offense coming against you, I think is going to bode well for Alabama. Now that don't mean we abandon the passing game. I think that really sets us up to take advantage of some big, deep balls in the first half, and then takes advantage in the second half, uh, especially the third quarter for some pass plays that will work off of those play-action passes off of our run game. So uh, look for Alabama to come out, try to establish the run in this game plan, and then look for us to be able to take advantage of our shots on, on offense. Uh, I think this is, a, is, a, is a, a typical way to take the air out of the ball. If you, and the reason I asked about that, I talk about that is this. If you remember the, the second game against Clemson, uh, we had an opportunity to beat, beat Clemson in the national championship game. Jalen Hurts came off the field with the lead with a minute to go. Uh, and, and the defense goes back on to try to stop uh, the, the explosive offense. Well, because we had not run the ball effectively in the second half in that Clemson game, our defense had been on the field for a long time. When you run the ball effectively, you rest your defense and give them a chance to be fresh as they can against an explosive offense. Also, because our, our run game had not been effective in that Clemson game, uh, our, the ball was given an opportunity for Deshaun Watson to keep getting opportunities to get his team back in the game. And that's what happened. You know, Jalen Hurts scores that what would, what would have been the winning touchdown for another national championship. Uh, and instead, uh, Deshaun Watson, the great playmaker, has the ball in his hands for over a minute and allows his team to come back and win on the last second there to defeat Alabama for that uh, second time we met. Well, that's what you don't want to happen in this game. We learn from our mistakes. So you want to take – uh, the ball out of the offensive hands. And by running the ball effectively, uh, I believe Alabama can do that. So I think we learned a lesson in that game. I think we come back in this game 
and we try to establish the run to set up the pass. Now, as far as players to watch, I want to give you three players to watch on offense where it will be a barometer so that you can tell how good Alabama is doing in this game. First of all, uh, I think you have to start with Tua Tagovailoa. If he comes out and is able to play and be effective in this game, it's going to give you an indication of how good Alabama has a chance to really dominate and win this game in a big way. I think if he comes out close to 100%, is, is hitting his passes, he's, he's uh, accurate with his throws, uh, he's making the right calls on the read uh, option, uh, running the ball, make it, getting us in the right place to run the ball. I believe you'll see if he's clicking on all cylinders early in the first quarter, watch him. He'll be a barometer to see how good Alabama is going to play on offense the rest of the day. The second player to watch is Damian Harris. If Damian Harris comes out and gashes and gets some big plays early, I think that just gets him going. He's going to get going in this game, and he has a, t- a chance to have a monster game here. Uh, Damian Harris, Josh Jacobs, and Najee Harris all have an opportunity to have a monster game, and this be uh, you know, just a huge game for them. Uh, I think uh, if you watch Damian Harris early and he gets that hot hand, he can take advantage of maybe one of the biggest games of our running back in playoff history uh, against Oklahoma. Just I, I, I say that because I just think that one of our backs is going to have that edge. It may be Josh Jacobs. It could be uh, Najee Harris. But I believe Damian Harris is hungry for it. He has a fire in his belly for it and wants it. I know Josh Jacobs does. He's proven that. So if Damian Harris comes out and gets the hot hand, you know, that Kansas running back who run for over 200 yards on Oklahoma, Damian Harris, is, is, is the quality of his running is so much better. I think that he has an opportunity to have a big game. So if he has a big game early in the first quarter, that's a problem to let you know that Alabama is clicking on all cylinders and maybe just blow this game wide open. And the third player on offense to watch is Irv Smith, Jr. If we run the ball effectively as I think we can in the first half, and in that first quarter, they're trying to cover our, our defensive uh, our defensive scheme is to cover and shut down Jerry Judy and Henry Rhodes III and Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith. That's who they're concentrating on. Look for Irv Smith Jr. to be running open over the middle with those cornerbacks and safeties on their man with their back turn. He has a chance to gash, just like O.J. Howard did Clemson uh, in the national championship game. Look for Irv Smith. If he has a couple of big plays early, that's another indication that Alabama's offense is on all cylinders and might just blow this game away. Our three players on defense to watch for is you start no other than Deontay Thompson. You know, Deontay Thompson is going to be that safety back there watching for those uh, to try to, uh, with his ball hawking skills, to try to pick off Kyler Murray. If our defense can pick off Kyler Murray early, if we can take advantage of a turnover, if we can get something on our side to flip it in, in our advantage, then that, that could show us a, be a barometer to show us that, hey, Alabama can blow this game wide open. So Deontay Thompson, he has the skills. He has the speed. He has the range from side to side, from sideline to sideline, and he has a knack for the ball. So watch for Deontay Thompson. If he can get an interception early, uh, that will give you the barometer, the spark, to show that our defense is going to have a big day against Kyler Murray. The second person is Xavier McKinney. I think Xavier McKinney comes down the line and is able to put pressure on and keeping Kyler Murray in the pocket, uh, put pressure from the outside, blitz him in some situations to get him take advantage of a of a of a, uh, that corner blitz or that star blitz that we use. I think Xavier McKinney has a chance to have a big day if he gets a big sack earlier. Watch for him. If you see a big sack or a big pass breakup, a big interception, whatever he might contribute, that would be a spark to show you uh, that Alabama's defense is ripe uh, uh, and ready. Uh, to stop Oklahoma's explosive offense. And finally, the the person that you need to watch early, and I'm talking about early in the first series, is Quinian Williams. Watch Quinian Williams on the line. This Oklahoma offensive line has been touted as the best ever. Won the Joe Moore Award. Uh, Many have said there's nobody better. Everybody on Alabama's offensive line and defensive line have heard that. It's It's been ingrained in their brain this last week of how great this offensive line is. If in the very first series, Quinian Williams can get any push against that great offensive line, and I think he's going against the weakest link on that offensive line, their center. If he can get a push and get in the backfield in the first series and disrupt Kyler Murray, I think it's going to give a spark to the entire Alabama defense and Alabama's defensive play. 
might just pick up just a little bit because of, of, of the spark that he can give them. So watch for Quinny and Williams on that line, that first series, uh, to, to dominate his man and get in the backfield and disrupt Kyler Murray. So if, if you look at all these players that I've mentioned, uh, Tua, Damian Harris, and Irv Smith on offense, uh, Xavier McKinney, Deontay Thompson, and Quinny and Williams on defense, those six players – could be the barometer to show you that Alabama is up for a big game. So watch them early in this game to let you know what track we're on uh, to defeat this Oklahoma explosive offense. Well, finally in this third segment, uh, we come to the time where we see how, our prediction. What do we think this, how we think this game is going to play out? Well, I've mulled it over and I've thought about it. I've gone back and forth on and what we see, and I know there's some what we're going to see, and I know there's some uh, outlying factors out there, but I'm going to go and give you my prediction as if, if Tua comes in and is playing at 100% at his best, if Jalen gets to contribute, if all things work the way we think they're going to do, absent now we know Deontay Brown won't play. How do I see the prediction on this game? What do I see happen? Well, I see Oklahoma scoring some points because that's what Oklahoma does. They have an explosive offense. They can uh, generate points. They can generate plays. They have explosive playmakers. So I look for Oklahoma to, sp to score some points on this uh, vaulted uh, uh, Alabama defense. But I look for the Alabama defense to make the big play when they need to, to get off the field on third and down, to flip the field position, to get a turnover, to do something that disrupts the uh, Oklahoma offense enough to give the ball back to Alabama. I look for Alabama to be able to gash them with the run, score multiple touchdowns with the run. It sets up multiple touchdowns with the pass play. I, look, I like Alabama to come out and play this game with a chip on their shoulder. Their quarterback didn't win the Heisman. Kyler Murray did. Their offensive line didn't win the Joe Moore award. Their uh, offensive line, Oklahoma's offensive line, did. You know, Mac Wilson didn't even get any consideration uh, for the uh, awards. I hope he comes out and plays with a chip on his shoulder. Queen Williams wins all the awards, but everybody's talking about the people on the other side of the line from him, not talking about him. I think Alabama comes about out with a little chip on their shoulder in this game, and I, I think they play under control. I think they treat this as a business trip, not the ultimate game for them. Their ultimate game is to win this game so they can get to the next game, which they believe their ultimate uh, prize is the national championship. I think Oklahoma is playing to beat Alabama, and I believe they're putting all their eggs in that basket to beat Alabama to do whatever they can. I believe they're going to be playing fast and loose. I believe they're going to gamble a little bit. Alabama's going to be on a business trip, and Alabama's going to take care of business. I look for Alabama to put up points in this game. I look for Coach Saban to say, hey, if we can score, let's score. And I think Alabama has, has a big game. My final prediction will, will, will bear that out. Oklahoma scores some points, but Alabama scores a whole lot more. Alabama wins the game against Oklahoma. 62 to 31. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast today. I hope you have a great day. Uh, we'll be back for another podcast after the Oklahoma game to review and look forward uh, to the next game in the national championship. You have been listening to the DC Capstone Report. The DC Capstone Report is brought to you each time this week by RollTideBama.com and FreelancePictures.com. Be sure to go online and check us out on dccapstonereport.com for future updates.